This is the Gentleman Podcast brought to you by Shane and Josh. Now, before we begin, have another glass of water. Peter, as you know, I love you very much. Are you breaking up with me? Pete, are you, um... I just need a minute. I know what's happening here. I really do. You've been working so much lately that we haven't got to spend much time together and you're forgetting what it's like to be with me. But maybe if we just held each other or something, no. you would remember what it's like to be with me. No. So that's uh, Jason Siegel, Kristen Bell in Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Um, <laughs> and I think we've kind of all been there. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, and that's and that's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, so we, we we heard some feedback about our last recordings. And, uh, you know, I just want to give a, a quick little recap. You know, sometimes we're probably going to be a little more serious. Sometimes we're going to be a little more funny. A little looser, a little lighter. Uh, it all depends about the content and the situation. And I think today's recording, today's session, is probably going to be a little bit on the lighter end. And that intro is perfect because I think we've all been in a relationship where we are completely blindsided by a breakup or to realize that you are just in completely two different places where where you thought the relationship was at. And... I can't speak for Shane, but I think when that happens and either literally or figuratively you find yourself with your pants down, you're just trying to find any kind of grace and any kind of way out. And and really, that's what we want to talk about is like when you're confronted with that kind of a situation, what do you do and and what's going through your head and how do you try to maintain uh, some semblance of control or normality? So what we're going to do is we're each we're each going to give you a story, a rather ridiculous story uh, from from our past in, in which we were confronted with said situations um, and then how we handled them in the moment and, you know, how how maybe we wish we handled them um, and see if we can't pull our pants back the hell up. Yep. And and I think, by the way, so both of these stories are true. Uh, yes. Shana, yeah, Painfully <laughs> so. <laughs> painfully awkwardly true but uh it's also worth noting that i think that uh these particular kind of breakup stories were not necessarily the heart-wrenching heartbreak moments that you know maybe jason siegel's going through in that movie and i'm sure we will have conversations about those really really deep co- uh relationships and when they go south and what you do with that this is yes. this is probably Maybe not during a pandemic, like maybe when we, when things are already good and not like we're already one step on the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good place. So so lean back, sit back and uh, hopefully you guys will have some laughs and then we can do a little postmortem. <laughs> uh, just a quick little context. Uh, so this is and I've been dumped plenty of times, <laughs> but this one always stuck out in my head and I and hand to God. Every word of this is true, because if I could make this up, I would totally have a career as a paid writer. Every word of this is true. Uh, I was living in California when when this particular one happened, and uh, I was seeing this woman for uh, a little bit of time. And this was probably this was like after my mid 20s relationship it was after I had moved to California. And so, like, you know, we've all had our fun and you know you, you go do whatever after a breakup i'm sure you can all read into that as you will but this was someone that like i really felt like a connect like a little bit of a connection to and it wasn't even a really long amount of time it was it was like a really brief amount of time but like i just there was chemistry there and so uh after a period of, of not having had that in my life i think i really just like kind of gravitated to it and so another in the things to take away from the dumpster fire of my relationship existence is this was also at a period of time when, for whatever reason, I always seemed to be dating people 
that lived at least 45 minutes to an hour away from me, which, by the way, really sucks. Because then when you get dumped, if you've gone there, you have to drive home. (laughs) I've been seeing this woman and I go to her house. And at this exact time, she had moved back in with her parents. Because My recollection was I think she was starting like a photography company or business. So she was living with her parents. Uh, working a day job, and her niece and nephew uh, lived with her too. And I really got along. They're both good kids, but I really got along with the nephew because um, he was he was smart as a whip. And he was really young. And this is all relative to this story, I promise. And what I liked was uh, I love to play chess. And here's this little kid who wanted to play chess all the time. So this particular night, I get to the house to pick her up. Uh, she looked amazing. Uh, I remember that she, really great dress and whatever. And we decided we were going to go out to some like Mexican restaurant. And um, and she seemed a little bit off, but I kind of presumed that it was just you know the stress of you know you're how old and you're back living with your parents and you got your nephew and your niece. And uh, so while I was there, and her her nephew's name was Tyler, I remember that this kid said, uh, "Hey Josh, can I can we play chess?" And I was like, "Well, Tyler." Um, I'm taking your aunt out. And so I'll play you when, if, when I get back, if it's not too late, I'll play you when I get, when we get home. And he's like, oh, great. Thanks. So anyway, we drive to this, uh, Mexican restaurant. It was on the water. I mean, it was like a really awesome, you, you went out and you were sitting right on this big wooden deck overseeing the water and everything. And, uh, you know, they had a mariachi band that kind of like authentic vibe to it. So, uh, you know, we we sit down we're looking over the menus and the waitress comes over and she was just and she's like you know are you ready to order tonight and i was like uh yeah i believe we are and at that exact moment this woman breaks down into tears (laughs) and says i'm sorry i just can't do this right now (laughs) i just i you're a good guy swear to god this is true and the waitress looks at me, and I look at the waitress, and I'm Wait like, a minute. I, I was exactly, I was like, I, I think uh, we need a minute. And she was like, okay. And just starts <laughs> walking back. And the, the, so the girl across from me is just, just totally in this whole breakdown about how it's, it's just a really bad time in her life. And during this, the mariachi band sees us and decides to start walking over. And it's like, so I'm, I'm getting the full dumping and all you hear coming is like, and I'm like waving them away. Like, no, 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 no. And in between that, the couple to my right. Yeah. A couple, I, I caught this not real hard, you know, him and her both kind of lean over in their chairs. Cause they're like, <laughs> Oh, what's, what's this shit show that's going on? Cause I really wanted to turn to them and be like, cause, you know, really unsubtle. And, and and through this, you know, it's just like, I'm trying to start a business and I just can't be in a relationship right now. I'm like, it's fine. Don't even worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> As it's coming closer and I'm like waving them off. They're not understanding because there's like no English. So I'm like, no, 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 no good. And I think they're interpreting my hand signal as like, oh, they're very happy. Great couple. Again, table to my right, go suck a dick. You're terrible. And, and so... <laughs> Oh, this is every word of that is true. Uh, and so, like, finally, I, I the band goes away, the mariachi band goes away. And, you know, in that moment, at least, you know, the takeaway is like, she's like, I, I just can't be in a relationship right now. I just I can't do this. And I'm like, that's OK. I, I would have appreciated if you had told me that before we came to the restaurant. Um, but I was like, I understand. So that was really difficult to begin with. Because if you've ever been in this situation, you know, it was probably the, one of the better breakups in terms of like, there was no like, oh, you know, this is why. And, and that it was all a reflection of me. You know what I mean? It really felt in that moment like this is kind of a bad situation in terms of timing and there's a physical distance and like all these things. And, and in hindsight, probably not the perfect coupling anyway. But, but my point was it wasn't all directed at me. Um, but that said you still got to sit there through dinner with them. I can't believe you stayed. I, I did. The, I, look, the gentlemanly thing to do, a gentleman stays in an affable breakup or the attempted affable breakup. It did. Stay. It did. 
It did. So, so that was what we did. And I, and I paid for dinner and, you know, that was, we just kind of the rest of the, uh, the rest of the meal, my memory was, it was very just generalized topical. How's the rest of your day? And I was like, <laughs> well, it was fine. Thank you for asking. Um, <laughs> I, my memory again was that the, the mariachi band was very consciously staying away from our quarter of the deck at that point. Like we were now the cursed section. Don't go there. So you, that would have been the story, but it's not quite the end of the story. So uh, we then get in the car. We drive back to her house and I was like, well, we've got a little problem and I just got to talk about this. And she's okay. And I was like, well, it's okay. Like I, as it is what it is. Like I'm not. I'm not understanding the situation. But before we left, oh God, I had told Tyler I would play chess with him. Well, I don't want to be out of line. Your nephew didn't do anything wrong here, and <laughs> good uh, guy, Josh. Yeah. And so I was like, you know, if it's okay with you, I'm gonna go in, and I, I said I'm gonna whoop his ass. I'm gonna make it a real quick game. I was like, I'll, I'll beat him quick, um, and then I'm going to head out, But and I'll just tell him, you know, hey, you know, we played. So I go in, and we all put on happy faces, because it's just so awkward. And uh, he came up, and, you know, we, I was like, okay, you know, get your board. And so we played real quick, and that was that. I think we played, like, in her bedroom. Like, he brought the, the board in, and we, and so when we were done, I was like, okay, Tyler, well, it was good seeing you. Okay, bye-bye. And so we left. And I remember she was like, that was a really nice thing you did. And I was like, well, thank you. I was like, you know, he, he's a really good kid. And he, you know, he didn't do anything wrong. And I was like, I, I have a favor to ask, though. And she was like, okay. I was like, well, if I'm hearing you, it's not like I've really done something wrong here. It's, it's, it's not like I'm a jerk or something like that. And she said, absolutely not. She's like, no, it's just, it's, it's just not working out. It's a bad time. I said, okay, great. No, no worries. I said, well, again, the only thing I can ask of you is this. Um, I'm like, I'm sure in a couple weeks, they're going to realize when they're not seeing me <laughs> that we've gone our separate ways. And, and I would really ask that you don't say something bad or negative. Like, can you just do me a favor and say that, unfortunately, Josh was killed uh, <laughs> jumping out of a helicopter uh, in the Middle East, <laughs> saving two children and a puppy from terrorists. That's it. And that's it. And she looked at me like I had three heads and I was like, no, 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 I'm really quite serious. I would like you if that brings up <laughs> that, unfortunately, Mr. Josh is no longer with us, but he saved these two kids and a puppy. That's amazing. Yeah. That and a hundred percent something I, I immediately could hear you saying that yeah. was all working up. And for the listeners, you know, at this point, they're probably thinking something, you know, leading into that comment of like, you just play. We ended amicably. It was timing. No, that's not Josh. So has to be something completely that. absurd. One Never. more laugh just to live, before to leave the room. That's it. And also, don't be the couple in the booth to the right. Don't be those people. Allow people to have their moment in as oh. much privacy as you could possibly have in a mes- Mexican restaurant along the water with a mariachi band bra- drawing the attention to your booth. Still, no. fight that urge. Be good people. Again, table a couple that, that I will never know or see again in my life. Let, exactly. Like, look, if I was in your shoes, everyone listens. I get that, especially like, you know, you're but but literally, Shane, they craned their bodies to the side to be like, I think he's getting dumped. Do you hear her? She's dumping him. That's why the waitress walked away and she's crying. They're not engaged. It's dumping. It was like, really, dudes, go fuck yourself. So there is. There's a lot to unpack from from this story. There are several things that that, that really did stick out to me. So, I, like, I need to ask if it's all right with you, Josh. I, I'm I'm going to ask you some <laughs> things to make you dive back into to the heartbreak of of this awkward mariachi led story. Thank you. But sure. Before look, before we even get to like the circumstances of the breakup or, or anything like that. I like this is something to me that sticks out as like number one gentlemanly thing that you can do is if you say you're going to do something, you do it. So you felt the need that despite the the level 11 awkward that you experienced <laughs> that entire night that you were going to keep your promise to a completely innocent bystander in the whole breakup and, and this whole circumstance and situation. And you had the confidence to sit here and ask this woman, 
would you mind if I did this? Why did you feel like that was so important to do? Because I'm a masochist, Shane. Emotional I'm really masochist. Just an emotional masochist. I just sometimes <laughs> I'm at home and I just hit myself with a hammer on my penis. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's not true. I'm a sadist, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> you guys just keep looking for my OnlyFans. Wait till you find it. That's um, it. You know, because you because you kind of said it right there. It was one of those things that, like, as awkward and uncomfortable as that moment was. I felt like it was the right thing to do. And I think knowing that that kid was waiting there, it would have probably made the night more awkward and horrible for me, feeling like I didn't, if I just dropped her off and said, okay, I'm out. Uh, And I think, and incidentally to like anyone listening, like that would have been a completely okay thing to do, to politely just be like, okay, you know, we got through dinner and, and I understand your reasonings and everything here is totally okay. Like, but um, but I, I'm going to leave now. Like that would have been totally okay. But just for me, I think in that moment, I was like, that's going to make it worse for me. Cause now I'm hurting someone unintentionally. Like I said, for, for me, when you told me that and, and I sat there and, and I was like, he's really going to go back inside and he's going to, he's going to play chess with this kid. <laughs> and also side note, did you, you did kick the kid's ass, as, as you kid mentioned. Kick the kid's ass, yeah. That's, and that's a valuable life lesson. Be careful what you wish for, <laughs> kid. Be careful what you wish for. Emotionally distressed man coming in here looking to kick your ass in chess. Well, it wasn't that I kicked his ass. It was that I kicked his ass to make it quick. So sticking in the emotional masochist type of thing and the fact that you, you put yourself in a bit of an awkward position. Let's go back to the fact that you, you willingly sat through an extended. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> awkward. Yeah position and you decided that despite the conversation that happened whilst being serenaded by a a mariachi band's instruments that you were going to stay that you were going to stay and you were going to have dinner and you were going to make awkward conversation of like how was your week to me like i can't even fathom sitting across from from a, a romantic partner no matter how short or long my time was with them knowing our time is ended and let's get through this evening. Let's still share a meal. What went into that? Um, you know, I won't lie. I won't lie and say like I was in complete analysis and thought mode with that kind of thing. But, but I will say again, um, it wasn't, it wasn't the kind of pull your heart out breakup that I'm sure at one point in time and space you and I will discuss and how you get through sure. that. But it was more the idea of like this person was so, as I mentioned, like she was crying, she was so upset. And and I think it was more like a, I knew that this was just a bad timing situation. And, and ultimately clearly we weren't meant to be together any which way, but like, but it wasn't one of those things where it, it was like, you know, nails being driven into you to sit there it was like okay well we're just going to get through this dinner and you know and i felt like letting her talk about her rationale and and where she was coming from was like the right thing to do and because again for me it wasn't about me that doesn't mean i was perfect i'm sure you know there were things i didn't she didn't love about me or whatever like that's that's anything because i I think if you really really want to make something work you will but what i'm saying is in that moment i just it kind of goes back to that like okay yeah, you know, we're going to we're just I'm going to finish this meal and this is the right thing to do right now and let you speak your truth about what's going on in your life. And and I'm going to hear your conflict with this and all that. And that's OK. Like, it's, it's OK. It's not comfortable, but OK, being the person to sit here and kind of just hear you out right now during this. And I also like it wasn't just to be real clear. It wasn't like I was trying to convince her don't do this or something like that. It really was like, a, I understand like this. And it was in early, like, you know, we don't kind of been seeing each other for a little bit. And I don't even know how many dates. And um, I mean, some physical things obviously had happened, but that's it. But it wasn't like this was like a two, three, four year relationship. And, you know, so so it was kind of like that. OK, that's OK. And honestly, I thought we'll still be friends. Like it was handled well enough that uh, that was a hope. Yeah. So, look, later on, when I tell my story later on, I had a similar bit of a moment there where I had a decision to make to- you know, and in mine, it's do, do I allow for this conversation to continue or do I say, well, let's let's drive this car home, so to speak. Um, 
But um, but no, I think that uh, and that kind of leads into like the last thing that I really took away from this. And, and you kind of ushered it towards the, the beginning of the show. The, bad timing. You know, sometimes, you know, where you are and, and how you line up with a partner uh, in your individual lives, you know, first, maybe doesn't line up in a way that allows you to coexist romantically at the same speed and at the yep. same time. Uh, yeah. And it seems like, you know, what you were saying from from her as she was trying to start her own business uh, and she had moved back home and all these different things. Her life was in a different place than yours. Like it was. It was just bad timing, um, really, for everybody. But you realize like this, it had nothing to do with you. And I don't know how uh, how many of the listeners may be able to to sit there and, and hear that in a in the way that I think it should be heard. I've always struggled and I think it's natural. I, I mentioned, you know, I, is this me? Is this me? What's wrong with me? And, and sometimes it truly is a case of this is not the right time for this other person. And maybe it isn't the right time for you together. And, and I think being able to tell yourself and acknowledging, you know, while sure you may have had some faults, listen to the conversation and what's happening and you putting yourself through an emotional, an emotional <laughs> train wreck of an evening and sitting through a dinner, you allowed for that conversation to finalize and, and to really confirm to you that, you know what, I, I haven't done anything wrong here. Our time was was nice together, but unfortunately, lining up, it's just not going to work. Yeah, you know what? My sister taught me something, and, and I 100% think it's right. Sometimes love is not enough. And, like, you can totally love someone. And I have seen examples of this in my life, people separated by great distances, physical or, or, or bad timing in their lives, trying to tackle things. Like, you can totally care about someone, but sometimes it's just not the right time. And life is so in the timing. It's just yes. all about the timing. One more quick point, which I would probably say, which is, like, it also did, listening to her probably made it easier in the coming days, where I was definitely disappointed and sad, because I can assure listeners that there have been so many times in my life where, yes, I was the problem in the failing <laughs> relationship, and yes, I... Uh, you know, perpetuated activities and things that, that, that led a partner to be like, and I'm out. Um, <laughs> but, but being in this place and listening to her, and, and, and it probably helped that in the coming days, I was like, well, this just stinks. But it's it is understandable. It is. Exactly. And it's like, you know what, if I was in those shoes, I would probably say the same thing and do the same thing right now. So I have a story. Not quite as absurd, you know, in its own right, certainly is absurd. A lot of the different things that, that, that occur in my story um, kind of overlap some of the theories and some of the things that we just talked about with Josh's. But Josh, if it's cool with you, I, I'm going to give you a story now from from my my breakup past um, of a truly something that was I don't know that you can call a legitimate breakup, considering we just kind of woven and out of that path of are we together? Are we not forever? Uh, I'm 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 here. I've got a cup of coffee, so <laughs> let's fire this bad boy up. What do you All got? All right. Let's, let's see with your pants down. Let's see what it looks like. Come on. Oh. So this story is, if you could picture it, it is told in parts over like seven years. Uh, so this is, this is the only person that in my life I've ever revisited a relationship with. Um, you know, so, and we always seem to kind of try to balance each other out. Off and on throughout this time, uh, you know, we, we we were almost always each other's backup plans without ever mentioning that. Uh, and that kind of leads us to, so one of the things that we used to do fairly often was um, both, we both just love new music. So we would go for drives, right? And now, if you're someone like me who's like really enjoys being in the car late at night and just taking drives, you don't know where the hell you're going. You just want to listen to music or be alone with your thoughts, whatever that thing is for you. Um, but this for, for me and, and this, uh, young lady, this was one of our, our things. This was kind of our like creative, very us date. Did you um, put on, would you, would you listen to the cars song drive? Yes. It's, that's did, how we I started was, and ended things. That's how I figured. Yeah, or, well, the, you know. or the, or the soundtrack to drive. Did you soundtrack to drive. Just... No, but my God, that is a real missed opportunity. Holy <laughs> You should have just you should have just looked at her with a toothpick in your mouth and been like, "That's it." Just wanna, with a scorpion jacket. Want to go for? Actually, I feel like yours would have been a jacket with a frog on it, but that's okay. That's hurtful. Literally, Jesus. it is. That's true. 
Um, but regardless, so, you know, we're we're going on one of these evenings that, um, like we, we both really enjoy, right. Very unsuspecting of anything at this moment. Um, and I still, to, to this day, I still remember the exact part of the highway that we were on when this all occurred. Um, here we are, we're, we're, we're driving around, we're listening to this music, uh, and we're having, you know, a, a very lighthearted conversation and just kind of out of nowhere, um, you know, she, she turns to me and she's, she just goes, so, so you know, like, this is never going to work out, right? Now, mind you, we are at this point, I would later learn, uh, later that night anyway, learn uh, that we were about an hour and 20, hour and 30 minutes from home. Uh, and she's just dropped on the... This is never going to work conversation. Now, we now have to articulate a conversation and make something last that doesn't make either one of us want to jump out of the vehicle at any point over the course of 90 minutes. Um, now, again, seven years of never addressing we are each other's backup plans. Uh, we were both at this point very comfortable, at least to me, in being a backup <laughs> plan. This was fun. Maybe one day we will grow into I am your first option. We did not. We clearly did not. It was a wreck. And she just dropped this on me so casual. Like now it was at that moment I realized I was far more emotionally invested in this thing than she was, Um, which hurts. If you've ever been like in that relationship, that's (laughs) you're sitting there and you're like, man, well, yeah, this person's pretty cool. But then they leave and you're like, man, I really miss that person. I can't wait to see them again. Like that was me. It was not her. And I found out that evening. Uh, Now, as deadpan as she could possibly be, which was very different for someone who is as lively as this uh, woman was um it was just so very matter of fact rip off the band-aid you know you're just not as fun as you used to be and i don't really need this right now and it was all these very like hurtful but honestly very true things in the moment to hear um and again 90 minutes away from home so she begins telling me about all of the other partners that she has had over the course of these seven years and where i stacked up in various degrees of romance and holy crap is that not a fun conversation here we are 60 minutes left still no idea where the hell i am you know this person's more fun you know this person goes to college parties with me this person makes x amount of money this person's hung like a fucking horse all these different things and you're having to sit here and hear this and you're just like i want to run the car off the road right now (laughs) this is this is the place to do it right here (laughs) That's a tough situation. It's so bad. <laughs> and she's just so confidently <laughs> rattling these things off. It just doesn't matter to her. You know, and, and I'm sitting here just trying to survive it. I'm trying to survive it. And here I am just getting verbal, just abuse all the way. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, all right, you know what? I've made it through that the body of water we've just crossed over. I no longer feel the need to drive off a, off a cliff because there's no cliff to drive off of. Mm-hmm. We're good here. So <clears throat> here we are about half hour away from home. I finally start recognizing where the hell we're at. And I'm like, good. The end is near. The end is definitely near. I, I feel good about this right now. She tells me that she's not done talking. Would you mind making a right? Now, at this point, where we are is absolutely nothing but woods. I don't know. I can't see a damn. There's no lights anywhere. I'm freaking the hell out. I'm like, Kramer right now on the highway, I have like an eighth of a tank of gas left and I haven't seen a light in miles. I don't know where the hell I'm at. If I run off on the side of the road, most assuredly this very calm, strangely calm woman who was never calm, she's going to kill me. This is, I know this is how this is going to work. So we finally start seeing like any moments of civilization at this point. I'm like, all right, great. I'm sorry. I know that you want to keep talking, but like we, like I got to stop for gas so that I can get us home like fairly safely at this point. Pull up at a gas station doing the whole pants check thing. And I'm like, I don't have a wallet. All right. Do I, I, at that that moment, I just, I had to weigh the option. Do I ask this girl for 20 bucks for gas to ensure that we get home? Or do I say, (laughs) fuck it. I am Kramer tonight. We're getting home. I said, fuck it. We're going home. So we started driving home. And by the grace of God, I get her to her house. Um, and, and I drop her off and it was the awkward exchange of, of goodbye. And that, that is what that is. Got a 15 minute drive home. I made it to the next stop sign and 100 feet out of the view of her home before the car died and ran out of gas. I had to sit in her neighborhood at least an hour waiting for gas to get there. But the important thing was I did not drive my car off a cliff. I did not die in the middle of the woods and was buried anywhere. Um, And uh, yeah, I got to say that that if you could just plan ways to be dumped, please do it where both of you have vehicles 
and can leave safely in opposite directions or or do it at their home so you can leave. I've never mastered that part, um, but maybe if you can, you guys can just write in and tell me how the hell you did it. That's great. It's a horrible story. That's a that's a tough situation. That's it's no a, fun. That's a tough situation. That's a shit your pants and dive in kind of situation. That's oh. a, <laughs> that story. happened. Yeah, that's a story. Um, so you know, obviously, I'm listening to yours, and I, you know, there are definitely some some connective tissues between the two. So I guess I have a question. You know, you had asked me like, why did I stay through dinner? Um, and I, I guess my question to you is like a kind of counterpoint is why did you stay on the road and, and just kind of keep taking the punches? Like, why didn't you just say like, OK, you know what? I, I hear your points. Uh, I'm sorry that that's how you feel. But like, you know, we can just drive home in silence now. <laughs> I mean, you're um, laughing, but I'm serious. Like, that's no, just... I look, I think hindsight, you know, I, I probably would have been like, you know what? I don't necessarily know that the things you're bringing to me in this conversation are constructive. It feels more venting. Um, but I could, and I, I will 100% own, as I've mentioned in this story, we were a, a winding in and out type of a thing. Um, never fully really diagnosed what it was that we, we had and what we were going for. Um, and I did not make things easy for her. Um, and I felt as though Throughout some of our comings and goings of the previous years and our previous you know, times together, um, I wish that I could have handled certain situations better. And for that, I knew that there was an immense amount of pain coming from this woman. Um, and I knew that there was hurt and I knew that there was anger. And I knew that in some way, shape or form, I, I did deserve that. Um, again, what, I want to make this clear. Like this was to me years later, I can still confidently say I believe this is more venting than constructive. However, if she needed it, it, this was still someone I very much so cared about. And again, I was blindsided by this conversation miles and miles and miles away from anywhere that I even could recognize. I knew that she needed that moment and I was not going to be the person who was going to deny her that. Okay, that that kind of makes sense. I can hear that. But I guess my question then, too, is like uh, and it doesn't sound like you're. Um, it doesn't sound like you're invalidating anything that she said, like you're acknowledging that there was that, that she had to work through some feelings that you'd probably put her in. But it also uh, you acknowledge that maybe not all of this was constructive. So I'm kind of curious. Um, maybe things could have been better phrased. I mean, I don't know if you want to give us any <laughs> examples of some of the shortcomings she outlined. But um, <laughs> I'm wondering, like, did, did you in hindsight, did you actually feel like, oh, there's some meat here? And and that Absolutely. helped me to recognize. OK, yeah. One of the things that, that I did take away um, was for a lot of our time in, in the beginning, um, you know, while, while she was actively communicating to me that, that, that this was something she would like to pursue. I continued to say that I felt as though both of us were in different. Different kind of times of our lives and, and it didn't make sense. You know, I had kind of already exceeded a moment that she was going through, um, and I didn't know that I would have enough in me to give someone romantically uh, who was going to be kind of going through a college period of time where they she needed to find herself, which incorrectly I made that decision for her. And that's my takeaway. Mm-hmm. There was a moment there that, through all of that, that venting and some of the hurt and some of the things that you know were coming out was I learned that I was making a decision based on something that I believed and not just actively or powerfully listening to the person who was telling me that just because I, I believe that they were in this place in their life doesn't mean that they were, um, you know, and, and I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, you know, that's like, I think that's really, that's, that's a great lesson because I know I've been there too. Like you're trying to do the right thing. Um, yep. and ultimately, you know, I don't think, I don't think you would have been wrong. Like maybe the thing still would have played out the way that they would have if you had given that relationship a real shot. And she, it sounds like she was going to college or whatnot. So it, it sounded like, yeah, it could have ended exactly where it would have been. But but the difference is you would have empowered her 
um, you both would have been making the choice together, like, okay, well, we're going to give this a try and see where it goes. And, uh, and then if it fails, like, yeah, I mean, in your heart of hearts, you're probably like, well, I knew that was going to happen, <laughs> but that's very different than making the choice for someone else exactly. and not. Yeah. So that's, that's a, that's actually a really like awesome thing that you learned from that. And, a- and well, that she slept with multiple other people besides you. That's <laughs> well, you know, I mean, again, when I mentioned that we were kind of, it, it was a coming and going type sure, type sure, of thing sure. and that we were weaving in and out, that is, there is some acknowledgement that there were stretches of time that we were not together. Um, and I am not a, we were on a break. I, I'm on a particular side of that. Um, but yeah, no, you know, I think that, um, like I said, of all the different things that, that were said, that were said then, um, I think that was the biggest takeaway for me. It was the fact that I, I was actively sitting here and saying, you know, I, I know you think you know what you want, but you don't know what you want. Uh, and that was, it was unfair of me. Um, and it's something that, Again, as you mentioned, Josh, like a lot of the times we, we, you know, someone who a gentleman work in progress, as we're calling ourselves these Mm -hmm. days, uh, we are trying to always actively do the right thing and and take into consideration, you know, what something means for someone else. Uh, And sometimes the best decision is truly just to listen. Um, And I didn't listen hard enough, uh, you know, throughout any of those comings and goings of, of this particular partner. Well, it's a, I mean, again, that doesn't sound like, <laughs> that's, that story does not sound like a fun experience. I feel like it was all, not, you know, that's a lot more uh, hurtful than, than uh, what I kind of went through, which again, it's still not fun for me, but, um, <laughs> but no, but it sounds like you really got some, some interesting, um, insights out of that. And I think that's the big thing. And, and again, you know, going back to, to, to what I think we're trying to get out of this particular episode. It, for lack of better words, you might have not been in the right mindset to say, or, or even to have the perspective to say for yourself, like, I don't know if you're, what you're trying to tell me right now, I don't know if that's constructive. Like there might've been a way and a place, no, I'm serious, there might've been like a way and a place and a time. But what I want to give you credit for is to say like, you didn't lash out at her, you didn't turn the tables, you didn't, you know what I mean? So, so really if the point is like, you're, confronted in such a way you it does sound like you you really maintained a modicum of grace and and a modicum of dignity by saying like okay i just i just need to kind of sit here and listen to this and and you know i'll take from it what i can and and you know maybe tomorrow it'll hurt more or hurt less or maybe i'll there's some real meat here but you didn't invalid it doesn't sound like you invalidated her experience and that's that's a good thing no like i i i am like i said (laughs) I am proud that that I did not actively make a difficult situation more difficult. Yes. Um, you know, and that much I can I can say. That well, I'm you proud. did. You you could have you could you did you could have said, "Can I borrow twenty bucks for gas?" You made a worse situation <laughs> ultimately, uh, because and that's pride. But 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 I meant in terms of like you didn't turn to her and say like, "Well, let me tell you about you." You know what I mean? Which you could have. Uh, you, you, a lot of people would have, but you didn't. So that that would have made it bad for everybody. Yeah, that no, and there and there's look, I, I and I will always say this, and this is something that mercifully I, I learned and, and knew prior to even this conversation is that you don't you don't rectify a, a problem by introducing additional ones. You know, you focus mm-hmm. on the thing that was brought up, and you know, you you work to acknowledge your part in that, and that's like I said, that that's what I was doing. You know, walking into that, walking and driving into that conversation. Um, you know, I, I felt like it was the right thing to do to allow that space for her to, to say that all the things she needed to say. Yeah, there was a lot. And, <laughs> there was a lot. I learned a lot of things off, about myself. Maybe maybe off air you can. Uh, <laughs> you yes. Can, for another conversation on a lo- another day, I have absolutely no doubt that there is a, a list. Uh, my list of faults is vast. And I think uh, ultimately what it comes down to what you were saying earlier, and and maybe this is a good place to kind of start rounding it out is it comes to communication uh, and it comes to open dialogues and being constructive and, and not presuming that your partner knows what you want or how you feel and you not presuming for them and making choices. And when you don't know what they're feeling or what you don't know, what they want to do or how they think or anything to feel empowered to ask questions and then, then be honest. It's all about that. It's it's all about, 
Watch for getting Sarah Marshall, people. That's really what the takeaway is. Watch for getting Sarah Marshall, yes. the whole movie, and learn how to be in a healthier, better relationship. That's what you all should do. Put on pants. And it doesn't matter if they're Costco pants or Sean John pants. Just put on pants. <laughs> for the people who've seen the movie and get that joke. <clears throat> so we should probably start winding it down. Shane? Yeah, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Not just the breakup scene. We're going to say watch the movie and make it all make sense for you now. Uh, Peter, as you know, I love you very much. Are you breaking up with me? Pete, are you... Um... I just need a minute. I know what's happening here. I really do. You've been working so much lately that we haven't got to spend much time together and you're forgetting what it's like to be with me. But maybe if we just held each other or something, no. you would remember what it's like to be with me. No. of the gentleman podcast brought to you by your hosts shane and josh if you've enjoyed tonight's show we will have additional shows on the first and 15th of every month we also have written content on our blog at www.thegentlemanpodcast.blog please be sure to rate and review if you've enjoyed this content and also share share with your friends share with your family share with your co-workers share with strangers on the street we are your gentlemen and we thank you for listening